Hey, I'm uh, Drew Paisler. I'm 32 years old. I'm a missionary working with Living Waters in Haiti. Um, we were on a trip heading from Port-au-Prince to Andrews Christian School. On our way, um, about 45 minutes north of St. Mark, um, we came upon a, what looked like just to be some debris in the road. Um, as we continued to approach further, we saw individuals come off from the sides um, and started seeing them swarm a vehicle that was probably 100 yards in front of us. At that point, we, um, we stopped in my vehicle I was driving and I put the vehicle in reverse and started to accelerate as fast as I could. It was that point that I saw them chasing after us with um, rifles and machine guns. Uh, we could hear them yelling to stop, um, but our passengers in my vehicle urged me to continue. That's when they began firing at our vehicle and struck it two times in the front of the, the bumper and the side of the vehicle. We uh, continued to accelerate in reverse and in the process of turning around um, to drive forwards, they shot out our rear tire. That's when uh, it became increasingly difficult to accelerate. Um, the tire began smoking as it was having difficulty trying to propel the vehicle forward. Um, and before I knew it, there was uh, two gentlemen on a motorcycle that pulled up alongside of us with a machine gun and opened fire. I, I thought that they had just hit the the glass and the door so I could hear the bullets hit the vehicle as we were going and that's when I heard Doug from behind me say I'm hit. Um, at that point I knew there was no way we were going to outrun him so we stopped. I took the truck out of gear. I looked back to see Doug covered in blood. They pointed the machine guns at us and asked us to get out of the vehicle. It was at that point, I put my hands up to display that I'm not addressing them and we just wanted to be left alone and get our friend some help. I could hear Doug moaning in the background. They were trying to, they wanted to shoot us and they wanted to kill me for escaping. It was then that Fred and one of the Haitian workers came around the side of the vehicle to help try to calm the situation and one of and more and more of the Haitian gang members began to surround our vehicle. One of them put their rifle inside the vehicle and was going to, for lack of better words, finish off Doug who was already bleeding and laying in his own blood in the back seat. At that point, um, a younger Haitian male pulled up on a motorcycle from nowhere and grabbed my arm, spoke perfect English, and he, he, he said, be calm. It was then that <clears throat> the man pulled the rifle out of the window. The man next to me grabbed my cell phone and my sunglasses off my head. The same gentleman who had just said, be calm, turned back towards me and said something to the gentleman in Creole that I did not know. And they, they, they started to progressively become less aggressive and started actually handing back all the stuff they were looting from the vehicle while this all was happening. They, um, at then we saw our other SUV that we were traveling with that was swarmed before us um, begin to come back towards us Doug still bleeding. Um, one of the other, we were trying to tend to him and also manage the situation. We needed to get him out of there. The other vehicle pulled up. Um, it was the only working vehicle because the, the other trucks tired and shot out. We attempted to try to load all of us into the vehicle. Um, was unsuccessful. Fred chose to stay with the vehicle and one of our Haitian workers to repair it. At that point, we had begun to, we had loaded um, Doug into the back seat, one of us, and all three, uh, myself, Rod, and Jeff were in the trunk of the vehicle. Um, Jeff was holding pressure on the wounds that were on Doug's face and his neck from where he was shot. 
rod held him against the seat so he wouldn't move and help keep him stable. At that point, we raced <clears throat> to the hospital where we were able to get him out of the, the vehicle and into some care of some of the, the doctors and nurses in St. Mark. From there, it was a few hours before we were able to secure an ambulance and medical personnel to transport him out there to Port-au-Prince. That's all I got. I was in the seat uh, next to Drew when he was driving and uh, looking out the front window, we had a pastor ATN. Jack, Jackie yeah. were all with ATM in the front truck, and we could see ahead of us as I was looking at and saw it stopped and thought there was a little fire in the road. We could pass those kind of things many times before as a political uh, demonstration, and usually they just demonstrate a little bit. You, they get, you give them a little bit of money, and uh, that's they let you pass through. So I was thinking we'd just keep going until I saw them pulling ATM out of the front seat. Uh, Force, not forcefully, but he was coming, but they were also grabbing him. And I saw them trying to get in all sides of the vehicle, and then someone started climbing up on the back of the vehicle. And um, and, I, and then Doug yelled out, look at the guys that got guns. And uh, I said, wow, this is different than what I'd ever seen before. And so um, I, uh, I uh, yelled at, uh, I said, as soon as I, as soon as I uh, it, uh, Drew started backing up a little bit, not fast, very slow. Thank you, merci. Slowly, we started, we started backing up slowly. We were backing up slowly, and not yet uh, as concerned as we might have been, at least I was, and, but we were backing away, thinking that we'll just bypass this or wait it out. And, and uh, what happened is, he, next thing I know, the guy with the gun's coming at us at a fast pace, and he's, he lifts the rifle, points it right at us, and uh, there was another guy on the right-hand side of Pastor ATN's vehicle that also had a gun. So we, I said, better get out of here. And so Drew stepped on it. We were going fast in reverse at that point. And that's when he shot a couple of times. Uh, Drew spun the truck around, and they shot us in the, in the back end. Uh, one went through the exhaust pipe. Uh, one went uh, into the tire, and the tire went flat. They were trying to drive on the rim. Uh, they were coming up on us and running as fast as they could. A few of them, as I looked back, we were being forward, were coming up on us. And then I saw it. A motorcycle coming alongside uh, with a guy with a gun on the motorcycle, and he just started shooting. It blasted through the window, and, um, and then, um, as we know now, another bullet came through the side of the door and went in and caught Doug in the back seat, right in the neck and shoulder, neck and chin. And he yelled out, "I'm dying!" A big shot. And uh, so, uh, at that point, we drew a stop the truck. And uh, we, we got out, all of us got out. Uh, I, uh, the uh, Bellamy was with me, he's the uh, Mason that we were taking to the Northwest to work on some of the campus. And, but he, and he spoke real well. But we went around the side and they were talking to Drew, and we went around the side with him and just said, well, you know, we, we, got, a, we got somebody who's, who's dying here in the truck, Marie, Marie, I kept telling him. And it, they looked in, saw who he was, and yes, somebody came with a, some sort of a gun pointed it in, they didn't know what they were doing, they said they, were, they looked like they were going to shoot them. And so uh, we kept talking. I'm going to stop and pause the question. Mm -hmm. Hey! Uh, and I kept saying, have mercy, you know, uh, give us, we, we're, not, we're not being dangerous, we gave them everything we had, we you know, gave them everything out of our pockets, so that there wasn't any, you know, they could take whatever they wanted. Uh, there was, in the back of the truck, it was very valuable uh, equipment for uh, servers and stuff for Andrews Christian School, probably in the $20,000 range. And they were asking what was there, and I told them that it was for Andrews Christian School and that we were going there as missionaries to, to do that, and that they'd leave it alone. And surprisingly to me, as angry as they were, they backed off and, and seemed to be willing to, to leave that. Uh, at that point, um, this man drove up, like Drew said, and helped calm the issue. Don't know who he was. He might have been part of them. I don't know. Uh, I think, but what happened was they gave back 
some of the stuff they had taken, like cell phones and some of those things, and backed off and started going uh, away. Uh, then we, uh, the other truck pulled up. They, they turned around, they pulled up, and we immediately wanted to get Doug, so we carried Doug, but Jeff and I carried Doug over to the car and laid him in the back seat, the, the other vehicle. And everybody got in that vehicle and took off. I stayed with the truck because I wanted to protect it and make sure nothing happened to it uh, and uh, try and get it back to uh, the safety. So I stayed there and worked for probably a half hour, 45 minutes, uh, trying to get the tires off with what we had. Uh, another gentleman came over with a tire remover and uh, helped us to get that done. So that the other people were gathered all around us and they seemed to be concerned. They seemed to be somewhat helpful trying to help me get this tire changed and uh, get the car back on the road. We got the tire changed, it was 50% flat, so it was only about that much air in it. Uh, pumped it a little bit and then uh, took off and drove down the road to St. Mark Hospital where we met uh, and stopped along the way and had the tire plugged and tightened and fixed. And then went to the, uh, the hospital and met with uh, the doctors there. So that's, that's the experience that, uh, that we had. Thank <laughs> you.